What's up single players, J Scott Brown here for only single player and it's time to take an exclusive first look at Unpossible, a game published and developed by Accelerator Incorporated. Now these are guys that are known for their mobile development, they have a catalogue of games currently on the iOS store and I believe Unpossible is one of their first ever titles to make it to the Steam storefront. Now understandably it's a very minimalistic game due to that and i believe when we actually dive into it that'll be made undoubtedly clear the fact that it is a mobile game and these guys maybe don't have uh, a big catalog of history in terms of developing for the pc uh, before we dive in though let me just note that it's ten dollars on steam and two dollars on the ios app store uh, so keep that in mind while we're playing through the game but regardless let's jump right in now the game actually is a little bit a little bit deceptive in the sense that you come into it, this is the main menu, and you scroll along here and you look at all these modes and it looks pretty enticing, to say the least, that uh, there are quite a few modes here to play through. And you unlock these modes by uh, playing the previous modes and then getting a good high score and then that in turn unlocks the next mode and the score you have to get is 60 seconds of surviving. The problem is that these aren't actually modes. Uh, these are just difficulty levels, so all it is is you play on simplicity at the start and then when you get to 60 seconds of survival time in simplicity, you unlock futile. Now that really isn't a big deal when you consider it's just a bit harder. It actually isn't any different in terms of gameplay, in terms of mechanics, nothing really new was introduced besides more obstacles and in the case of Ultra, the obstacles began to move. Now. That is actually kind of interesting uh, when you're doing that mode. However, the, the, the game needs more complexity in the earlier modes in order for it to remain actually interesting. Uh, but let's jump into simplicity and let's just see how the actual game plays. I just wanted to note that at the start because it does seem very uh, interesting that it just starts you off with a bunch of modes in the menu, but it turns out they're not modes at all. But let's jump into simplicity. Now, this is basically the game. You, you turn on a pole avoiding obstacles with the analog stick or the keyboard, the arrow keys. And that's that's kind of it. There isn't really much to it. Uh, you, would, you would think as you progress through levels, um, maybe different things could be introduced or simultaneously as you get to higher difficulties, maybe they could throw different obstacles at you, some that have maybe some enemies of some sort that give you some sort of blaster to spice up just kind of moving. Um, there's not really much to it, and it's quite unfortunate given the fact that, you know, it's not necessarily, like, bad to play, but it's just not really that interesting. There's nothing really going on here. To add to that, at a mechanical level, this game doesn't really have, again, anything going on. You, there's no boost button, there's no uh, slow down button, so you can't really employ your skills as a player to kind of survive longer in the levels. You ju this is, you can only turn left and turn right. There is no ability to kind of, uh, there's no power-ups of any sort. You can't boost an, at certain obstacles to get around stuff and you can't slow down uh, towards other obstacles. Um, and at, it just really, it's really sad because at a mechanical level, there's just no depth. There's no complexity to this. And when you remove complexity from a game, uh, especially such a skill-based game such as this, when it, the, the entire game is based around your ability uh, to get shorter times in each level and, and survive for longer. When you remove complexity from a game like that, especially at a mechanical level, you're kind of losing all sense of player agency. And that's a really bad thing because you really want the player to feel like they are earning the score that they're getting. And when you, again, kind of minimize the mechanics, you, you definitely affect the player agency. So, because all, all I'm doing is just turning left and turning right. There's, there's nothing that I feel satisfied in accomplishing in Unpossible. It's just, there's just not much to it. So I can't really feel fulfilled in the sense that I've accomplished anything. Uh, especially since you're already noticing, I would hope, that all these obstacles have repeated quite a bit. Um, in the different modes, there are, there, there's kind of like different daily challenges and then there's the randomly generated modes right right now we're playing in simplicity randomly generated uh, but there's also a daily simplicity challenge and also a daily futile challenge and a daily ultra challenge 
so, and the daily challenges aren't randomly generated. So basically what they try to do with the daily challenges is get you to repeat a level over and over again to try and learn the level, to try and really get a good time and to, I guess, challenge your friends to do the same. Again, the problem with that is that your kind of time surviving isn't really based on player skill as much as it's based on, especially as you get further and further in a level, the speed at which you're going that and kind of getting lucky. As you can tell, we can't really see too far ahead in terms of the obstacles that lie in front of us. So when it gets, when it starts getting really, really fast, especially on ultra and futile, you can't really rely on your own senses to, I guess, navigate the level. And in that sense, again, it's just not that fulfilling. I'll get to a point in a level when one obstacle will block seven eighths of the track and I just have to guess uh, which way to go. And if I get it wrong, well, I'm dead. And if I get it right, well, okay, I guess the right way. I, I, I decided to go right instead of left and simultaneously, I've, I've, I've just made it and I'm now continuing through the level. It's just, there's not really much accomplishment to it. And, and that's, that's really sad because in a game that is, especially in those challenge modes is what I'm talking about, you, you're supposed to kind of feel like you've learned something, I guess. And it's unfortunate that you, you don't really get that because you can't really see that far in front of you. So you can't predict how you're going to move on the track dependent on the obstacles coming because you just, it's too hard to see. There's just not enough kind of range in that sense. And a lot of the obstacles actually kind of come into vision the closer, closer you get. You can't see like down the track, which is unfortunate as well. When I get to obstacles that like are the big circles and stuff like that, those uh, big rings, you can kind of cheat some of the obstacles, especially those those uh, circle paths, because all you do is just go on the opposite side of the circles and you can kind of just get around them. Again, this kind of adds to what I'm saying about having no mechanical depth whatsoever. If you simply just put like maybe some sort of points in the game, then I would be forced to go through the obstacles uh, and play the game properly, uh, but you didn't do that, so uh, Accelerator Incorporated decided not to do that, so therefore, when I go through a obstacle such as this, and I don't necessarily do it um, the way I'm supposed to, I can just get away with that, I can kind of exploit um, the track, and that's probably not what you want. So let's go ahead and do a daily futile. Again, these are the challenges, so they're not randomly generated, these are I assume this will be ran randomly generated once and then given to players to play through on their one uh, go and then repeat it over and over to try and learn the track and do better. Let's have a go. So this is futile. This is the game's medium mode, essentially. And it certainly is harder than simplicity. There's a couple different ob uh, obstacles in your way and you're obviously going a little bit faster as well. There's a few different things to think about now in terms of the way you move, but again, that's all you can think about. There's nothing else here. Uh, it's not like there are boosts that I can get or power-ups to try and spice up the way I'm thinking about moving around the track, and there's just not really much going on, and that's really disappointing. I, I, I'm kind of a little bit livid at that. So, again, I can go through the circles, but I could just avoid them. I could just avoid them completely, and the game doesn't punish me for kind of exploiting the track uh, and not really doing it properly. See, I can just go on the other side. There's just not really much there um, in terms of really learning and feeling a sense of satisfaction. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do the ultra mode and we'll get a quick, quick preview of that and see how much harder does it really get. So as you can see, there's stuff moving now. We got We've got stuff going on in terms of the way the obstacles are interacting with us. There's a lot more obstacles on the screen, even though it doesn't really impact how difficult it is. It's just a lot more stuff going on, uh, a lot more stuff on the track, so it makes it harder to uh, necessarily kind of dodge everything. As you'll notice as well, I'm, I'm speaking a little bit slower in the ultra mode because it is much harder. Uh, it does require a little bit more focused attention. But, but again, it's only harder in the sense that there's just more on the screen. It's not harder in a sense that it's more challenging and therefore more satisfying to beat. Not really. I mean, it's just it's just more stuff I gotta kind of get lucky with in avoiding. And I guess that's my main critique of the game, is that because of the lack of mechanics and the lack of complexity in the way you play, it just doesn't really... F it's not really that compelling, and that's a real shame. I will say, though, if we, if we were to 
kind of talk about a positive side of things for a moment. The, what the game does, uh, it does well. I, I don't think uh, the way the way you do move in the game is it's very responsive. It's tight. You know, everything on that level kind of works as it should. And in that sense, I feel like it's almost an injustice that there's not really much to this because it's almost the skeleton of a game that would be kind of enjoyable. Uh, at least average, you know, at least kind of worth a $10 buy. But unfortunately, in the state that it is, with having only one mode, and actually, no, it does have one other mode, which I'll show you briefly, um, and I hesitate to even call it a mode, because it's more of a screensaver, actually. It's just called Cruise, and there's no high score, because this this is it. This is all, this is all you do. You just... You just, you just go. Uh, so it's basically a screensaver of sorts. Uh, and maybe if you could put this as a screensaver, it might be worth $10 then, I'm not sure. But again, it's like there's not really much going on. So when you have a game that only really has one mode, and in such mode, there's no real depth to how the mechanics are working. There's no real complexity to the, to the way the player interacts with the game. Uh, there's not many challenges. There's no real... Uh, actual objectives or power-ups to entice the player to uh, try harder and do different things. When you don't have any of that, it's tough for me to kind of, I guess, that let that be okay. It's a bit, it's a bit strange, to be honest. Why don't we do a daily simplicity challenge? Because for the purpose of the video, it's going to be easier for me to kind of keep continue talking about the game. Uh, and also, it might be just more enjoyable to watch because it's just not crazy immense amount of objectives and crap going on, so <laughs> hopefully it'll be a little bit more compelling to watch. I guess my main point is that, as I said, there's there's what the game does and what Unpossible tries to do in the sense that it's trying to create a compelling time trial based survival game uh, while you're on a track avoiding obstacles and it's trying to create a sense of uh, intensity through that. I understand what it's going for, I understand the point of it, but the execution is uh, quite uh, lackluster, and, and and it's a shame because, again, there's there's a, there's a stuff here to work with. If they introduce stuff like boosting, as I have explained, and stuff like slowing down, then you start to really require the player to think about how they're moving on the track to observe the objectives and come up with strategies to avoid them in certain ways. When you start adding things like power-ups or maybe enemies on the track as well, then I have to think about how to avoid them and simultaneously increase my time on the track. There's more to think about and when you add more to think about and more to digest as a player, I am now more involved. That's a key point and this game doesn't really encourage that and it's completely evident in the way you control as I've said numerous times you just go back and there's nothing to this you just go back and forth I remember when I booted this up for the first time I was pressing all the buttons you know as it as you would just trying to figure out the controls and in doing so I learned that R2 and L2 do the exact same thing they go left and right the right analog stick does the exact same thing goes left and right the uh square and circle, I mean, that triangle, they do nothing, absolutely nothing. R1 and L1 go back and forth. That's all, that's the only control that there is. And so, the, the fact that the game is kind of, uh, or Accelerator Incorporated, more appropriately, is asking $10 for this, is uh, quite alarming, to say the least. I don't, I don't really see how that's justifiable in any manner, uh, especially in a week where a game like Rocket League comes out and is $20, granted, but is phenomenally deep at a mechanical level that offers a number of different team-based modes and is really compelling to play, and it also has a single-player mode. This has uh, no kind of story or even campaign to it in any sense. It's just a time trial game that you play over and over, and it's supposed to be... Rep it's supposed to give you some sense of kind of wanting to play again, in the sense that you're supposed to want to beat your time and get get longer on the track and get further through a level. But the reason why that isn't compelling in any way is because the levels are randomly generated with the exception of the daily challenges. And it's just not really that deep, so I don't really feel enticed to play through a whole level because it doesn't feel like I'm accomplishing anything. So, and that's a shame. 
I, th I think this, uh, as I said, it's a bit of an injustice because there is something here that can be, I guess, maybe updated into something that's a little bit better. But I don't know. I, it, it, it puzzles me the idea that they've either decided or didn't have enough time to actually introduce mechanics to make this game compelling in some way, shape or form. And that's probably the most disappointing uh, aspect of Unpossible. And it's a real shame. And before we conclude the video, I actually do want to mention that another positive aspect is the soundtrack. Uh, it certainly is a little bit depressing that the best part of a game that I can talk about is the soundtrack. I, I, I absolutely admit that. But simultaneously, that doesn't detract from the, the kind of truth that the soundtrack is great. It's a really nice score of electronic house music that synchronizes with the gameplay as difficulty ramps up, the soundtrack gets more intense, more vigorous, and that kind of encourages you as a player to get involved. Unfortunately, as I've already made uh, points of before, the gameplay doesn't really complement that in the sense that it's not really that involved with the player. But the soundtrack nonetheless is still good. Let's take a brief listen to it. However though, if you're still interested in picking it up, if you liked what you saw in any way, shape or form, please ignore me and go and buy it. Experience it for yourself. It's $10 on Steam and $2 on the iOS store. But as I said, in the same week where Rocket League comes out, which is a phenomenal game, it's a little bit awkward for me to try and imply that you should buy this game. But Rocket League is a first look for another time. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your first exclusive look at Unpossible, the game published and developed by Accelerated Incorporated. If you have any comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. Contact only single player on Twitter or contact myself. If you have any problems the way I critiqued or evaluated the game, I'd be happy to hear your concerns. But thank you very much for watching this first look of Unpossible, and we'll see you next time.